Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to speak a bit about energy and the environment. Now, in previous videos we had a look at different ways of obtaining energy and turning it into electricity, and now we're going to have a look at the problems with this, how it affects the environment, and how we're going to overcome that. Okay, so the first thing I'm sure you've all heard of is fossil fuels. Fossil fuels. Now this obviously includes things like petrol, also includes natural gas and coal. Now, these are the main ways in which we obtain energy. Natural gas makes up the largest proportion of electricity supply, and so this causes a problem. Fossil fuels will eventually run out. So they will run out. And so if we are relying heavily on these fossil fuels, what's going to happen when they've all gone? And even though we might think, oh, that's going to be ages away, it's actually predicted to be around about 40 years, maybe 50 years away. That's within most of our lifetimes, hopefully. And so it is a real problem that's not only going to affect our children, but will actually affect us as well. Another thing which, of course, is completely true is that when we burn fossil fuels, we give off carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is what is known as a greenhouse gas. So, greenhouse gas. This means it's contributing to global warming and climate change. The way it does that is it's trapping in the infrared radiation which comes in from the sun, and it stops it being reflected back out into space. Now, another thing which burning fossil fuels gives off is things like sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide, other nitrogen oxides as well, and these contribute to acid rain. Acid rain. Now, acid rain is a problem as it causes damage to buildings, it causes damage to natural habitats as well, and also it can get into water supply and um, it can end up either contaminating the water supply because it's too acidic, or it can kill organisms which are living in a certain um, aquatic area because certain organisms can withstand a certain amount of acid, a certain pH, and if it becomes more and more acidic because of acid rain, then we have a problem in that ecosystem. Now there is one method that we use to sort of mitigate this and one of those is carbon capture and storage and that's shortened to CCS, carbon capture and storage. What this does is that rather than releasing the CO2 into the environment as a gas, we capture that CO2 in other forms. So we capture that carbon and we put it in somewhere where it's not going to be in the environment. One example of that could be an old oil field. So oil fields, we can put this carbon in there and that carbon has now been captured. That means it's not contrib contributing to global warming anymore or it's not acting as a greenhouse gas because we have captured it and we've stored it somewhere safely. Now while this is a good um, technology to use, it's not really viable to capture all the carbon that we're releasing. It's just we just can't do it because we're releasing too much. What we need to do is look at other sources of energy in order for us to be a bit more sustainable. And one of those, which we mentioned a couple of videos ago, is nuclear. Nuclear power. So if you'll remember, nuclear power does not involve the burning of fuels. The energy being released by nuclear power comes from the fission of the uranium or the plutonium. Now, this might seem like a fantastic way to avoid the emission of these gases because we do not release greenhouse gases. So that's great. We're not releasing these greenhouse gases. And also, we actually produce more energy. Produce more energy. And we mentioned this in the other video as well. We produce more energy per kilogram of fuel. So that's even better. We're producing loads of energy and we're not releasing greenhouse gases. So problem solved. Well, not quite. Because what we're going to produce rather than greenhouse gases is nuclear waste. So I'm going to do these disadvantages in red. We're going to produce nuclear waste. And these, um, these waste rods they are are radioactive. So they are radioactive. 
Now, we can't just throw those in the bin and just go and put them anywhere because that's going to cause a lot of damage to anything near it. We need to dispose of this radioactive material safely. And a lot of the time, the way we do that is we bury them in the side of mountains or, or somewhere like that, which is not inhabited by, um, by anything, really. And that sort of reduces the damage. But if we had to do this all the time, we would run out of spaces and it would probably cause a lot of damage to ecosystems. So that's not ideal at all. Now, another reason why this might be a negative is that we have a small chance of nuclear catastrophe. And of course, the largest example of this was in Chernobyl. And that was back in 1986. You don't need to remember that. But the Chernobyl uh, disaster had massive impacts on a lot of places. Um, even the radioactivity even spread as far as Norway. So it was a massive, massive catastrophe. It caused a lot of damage to the environment. And it's not known how much effect this had on humans around, but there was definitely a massive impact. So even though nuclear reactors are normally safe, if something goes wrong or someone does something wrong, then there could be massive danger to human lives and to the environment. Okay, so what about other sources of renewable energy? So renewable sources. Well, we had a look at these in the last video. There are a lot of them. And of course, there are a lot of advantages. One main advantage is that they will never run out. Never run out. Because things like the wind, the wind is never just going to stop completely. Um, the tides are always going to go in, etc. So they'll never run out. And they generally, say generally because sometimes we can produce them, they generally don't produce greenhouse gases. Okay, they're also not going to create nuclear waste, so radioactive waste material is not going to come from a wind turbine or come from a hydroelectric power plant. And one last advantage is they can also be used, so can be used in remote areas. This is important because the national grid obviously connects homes um, and other buildings and everything else but that's only in built up areas if you go out to the desert for example then you're not going to get the national grid going there but if you had solar cells or a few solar panels they can operate fine without the national grid whereas obviously nuclear power needs to be supplied to certain places via the national grid so it can be used in remote areas now, of course, there are going to be negatives to this as well. And these negatives are going to depend on which renewable source you're using. Now, for example, a lot of them are considered unsightly. So they don't look great. For example, a wind turbine in the middle of a field. People, Some people think that it just sort of destroys the natural beauty of the environment. The same with things like a hydroelectric plant just bang in the middle of a river. Um, or... Tidal generators, which are out uh, in the sea, a lot of people think that they just sort of ruin the sites. Now, that's one negative. Slightly more concerning is that they also uh, they also can cause damage to natural habitats. Because you're going to be putting these in natural environments, for example, in the sea or in a field with your wind turbines. Now... Animals and plants are going to be living in those environments, and these are going to affect that habitat. So natural habitats. For example, a bird might fly into a wind turbine, and this does happen. Migrating birds fly into wind turbine fields. Also, you have tidal barrages, and this can mess up the, the aquatic um, organisms in that environment. It can cause the death of fish and uh, other organisms like that. A lot of the time they are very expensive to produce as well, or to implement. So expensive to implement. It costs a lot of money to produce solar cells, especially a solar tower. And for example, it's going to take a while for you to get your money back on that. So how much money are you saving by using solar power? But it's costing you a lot of money to start with. 
And so that couples with something we've seen before known as the payback time. That's how long it takes for an appliance to pay for itself in money savings. And one last one is they are not always reliable. Not reliable. For example, one day it might not be a sunny day at all. And so if you're relying on solar power, but the sun's not really out, you're not going to be getting too much power from those solar cells. Also, one day it might be really windy and your wind turbines are going to work perfectly. The next day it might be really calm and therefore nowhere near as much power is going to be generated by those wind turbines. So it's important that you use appropriate forms of renewable energy depending on where you are. You wouldn't put a solar cell which is going to be facing away from where the sun normally is. Or in a really cold environment, uh, you wouldn't use a solar cell either because it's not, going to, it's not going to take in as much energy as it would if you put it somewhere where there's a lot of sunlight. Also, you wouldn't put a wind turbine somewhere where there's not generally that much wind. Whereas if you put it near the coast, then there's going to be a lot of wind because of the coastal breeze. And so it might be more economic to use it there. So really, with these different forms of energy, whether you're going to be using fossil fuels or you're going to be using nuclear power or you're going to be using renewable sources, you need to be able to discuss the pros and cons of all of those and say why. So you're not going to be marked on your opinion. Some people might think, well, nuclear power is the way to go. Some people might think, absolutely not. Uh, renewable sources are the way to go. That's down to you. But you need to be able to sort of summarize, if you like, the pros and the cons of all of them so that you can make an informed decision. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Um, that was just sort of a brief overview of the pros and cons of those. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to comment in the box below or send me a direct email using the link. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.